This news update is brought to you by Say hello to Shanta. Shanta is an entertainer, but she also loves to be entertained, which is why she has Flow TV brought to her through Flow's 100% fiber to the home network. It's great for busy Shanta because she can control the time she watches her favorite shows, play back from the start in case she missed it, or even record with cloud video recording. And with her Flow Services bundle, enjoys much more for much less. Visit any Flow retail outlet, call 1-800-804-2994 or visit discoverflow.co to find out more. One of a kind connection. This is how we flow. This is the Barbados Today Afternoon News Update for Thursday, September 1st. Thank you for joining us. I am Mary Claire Williams. Thousands of households across the island started their day without electricity today, and businesses were also forced to delay the start of operations as a result of the widespread power outage, which occurred just before 6 o'clock. The Barbados Light and Power Company says it is now trying to determine the cause of the outage. Barbados today understands that up to 11 o'clock, power was restored in up to 75 percent of affected areas. We also spoke with some businesses in Bridgetown to find out just how they were affected. Early in the morning, we recognized that um, the power was out. We also made contact with the Barbados Light and Power, and they indicated to us that they had their technicians on the job and working, trying to get power restored to Bridgetown as quickly as possible. Uh, I thought what was important for us is that we communicated to our customers who had been outside from around 7.30, 8 o'clock, waiting to get into the store to let us so it communicate to them that um, we couldn't open basically because even though we have standby power, the generator does not facilitate the use of the AC. And as you could well imagine, the store being closed from overnight, the store would be warm, and we didn't want to have them shopping in an uncomfortable environment so early in the morning. So we took the option to remain closed, communicating to them periodically that why we were closed and that we would try to keep them informed during the course of the morning. We never felt any effect. Well, the effect side, you know, the negative side was about the air conditioning, because our generator cannot, uh, you know, the engine drive the, um, the escalator and the air conditioning. Only that way. Other way, we are fine. We had no problem, because the light was on. But in general, you know, it has a different effect from a different side, you know. Okay. Do it about the air conditioning and so on. You definitely see any benefits of having the generator. Of course, definitely. I think which is a very rare, you know, in Barbados for the power failure to face power failure. We never faced before, you know, only if we have a, a storm or hurricane, you know, how it is. Uh, usually we never get that, you know. But today it, it was a little disturbed, you know, but we got out of it. The power outage also forced the island's courts to cancel today's proceedings, and the Barbados Water Authority also closed its offices this morning as a result of the outage. In other news this afternoon, three people sustained injuries in a shooting in Wharton Christ Church in the early hours of this morning. Police say the incident occurred at about 1.45. Three men, aged 16, 19 and 35, sustained gunshot wounds and were taken to the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. A 23-year-old woman also sustained bruises in the shooting. Police are also investigating the authenticity of pictures circulating on social media of two children found tied in a bedroom in Britain's Hill. The picture shows a boy and a girl with their hands and feet bound. The University of the West Indies says it is concerned that some prospective students are not taking up offers to study at the institution. UWI officials raised their concerns at a news conference this morning. Barbados Today's Emmanuel Joseph reports. Dr. Robinson said the university believes people who have been accepted to study this year but turned down the offers are in financial trouble. But of particular concern is the fact that too many prospective students are not accessing the array of funding options available to them through the university and the government. He said the university has a range of funding options targeted at those in the lower income group who may already have other loans with other financial institutions and can't afford tuition. He said such persons do not have to put their dreams on hold because there is a means test financing aid scheme which offers grants that don't have to be repaid. He told reporters there is also the Higher Education Financial Grant 2016-2017 being offered by the government of Barbados for full and partial tuition. Dr. 
Dr. Robinson noted, uh, scholarship in various disciplines are also available. Co-chair of the KFL Campus Financial Aid, Dr. Dolly Carrington, assured that there is no need for anyone who wants to study and can't afford to worry because they can come into the campus and discuss their challenges so help can be tailor-made just for them. Emmanuel Joseph reporting from the University of the West Indies at Cape Hill for Barbados Today. There's regional and international news after this short break. Lord, these papers ain't selling at all, at all. Get your paper, get your paper. Only 225, get your paper. Get your paper, miss. No, take it, take it, I'm gonna pay for it. Barbados today, all the way. <laughs> Barbados today, news you can trust. back now with news from the region. Venezuela's foreign trade minister, Jesus Farias, says the country is seeking to expand its economic presence in the Caribbean. Farias met recently with businessmen in the Dutch overseas territory of Bonaire. He says Caracas is now focusing on presenting its exports to other countries as part of measures to diversify its economy. Farias presented the possibilities and potential for investment in Venezuela's productive sector and said the Caribbean is one of the markets to be taken into account due to its geographical proximity to the South American nation. And finally, a rocket operated by the aerospace company SpaceX has exploded on the launch pad at Cape Canaveral, where it is being test-fired ahead of a launch. In a statement, the company blamed the blast on an anomaly and said no one had been injured. It said the rocket's payload, a satellite due to be launched on Saturday, was also destroyed. The force of the blast shook several buildings miles away and sent a plume of smoke high above the complex. That's news this afternoon. Remember, you can get more on our website, www.barbadostoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, and like us on Facebook. We're on Izumi Media in bus terminals and screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. Or you can tune in to Channel 99 on Flow TV or Mix 96.9 FM for more news. I am Marie-Claire Williams. Good afternoon.